When we motored into St. George's Harbor, Bermuda, and smelled the land for the first time in five days. It smells so good. We knew we were entering one of the most renowned sailing hubs in the Atlantic, but we were totally unprepared for how stunning the island itself would be. With its winding roads that traverse a rugged tropical landscape, passing through colorful historic towns, dense forests, and beautiful beaches, we've found that Bermuda is not only a famous crossroads for sailors, but a destination all its own. And although surviving Tropical Storm Alex put a bit of a damper on our plans of touring the island, we now have a few more days to explore before we set off on what will be by far our longest, most challenging journey, sailing 1,800 nautical miles across the Atlantic Ocean to the Azores Archipelago. But as for tonight, we're on our way to a party where we're going to celebrate the fact that we and all of our companions made it through the tropical storm. Hey! Hello! <laughs> but yeah, so for you guys, other than sailing back and forth, it was uneventful? We didn't drag. I mean, we didn't like break anything. Yeah. I did some damage on the front of the boat. It's just from chafing on the front. Look at that, that's pieces of the rope. Like it just kind of melted on a little bit? It just chafed, yeah. So what did you call this? Le Libra Garo? Oh, it's Le -Garo. a Zing, Zing Libra Moran. Zing Libra. Zing, Zing Libra Moran. That sounds like it could be like a German <laughs> boat builder, you know? <laughs> oh man, I like the solid handrails. So this here is Libra. This is the like awesome cockpit enclosure that Ryan built. So Ryan, how long did it take you to build this cockpit enclosure? Three months. So yeah. there was nothing before. It was just like a big canopy tent. Yeah. You know, just like everybody's bimini tops. Yeah, because I've got like, not even full headroom, I've got like easy headroom. We're very similar in height. So yeah, how tall are you? 6'4". Okay, that's exactly yeah. how tall I am, yeah. If I buy my next boat, I want it to be like one you previously owned. Yeah. <laughs> right, so we got our disco ball. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Libra is 57 feet officially, but she measures about 60 from bow to stern. It is neat how much space you've got in here. How many people could be super comfortable? I mean, like six, like oh, way yeah. laid Wait, out. Eight, eight, yeah. Well, that galley is amazing. Look at that thing. There are apartments with smaller galleys right. than this. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. You built all of I built this. everything. That's amazing. I mean, except for the bulkheads, right? I left the bulkheads in place, but everything else you see, I built. Was that out of necessity? Like, was it kind oh, of yeah, it rotted? Was, yeah, it was all rotten now. So right. we have our salon. Yeah. Little TV, we have our sewing machine, table. And when you're doing charters or trips, mm -hmm. you've got people sleeping in the yeah. pilot berths. And then these bottom ones pull out, right? Oh, nice. And then this is how you just walk up there. That's just a normal V-berth. I have a couple on board. Um, but I'll usually throw them up in the V-berth. See here, this is the forward head. Just oh, wow. Off. That's a lot of space. So this last trip, I realize that kind of clothing management is a thing okay. on passages. Like, what do you do for having lots of people in kind of so, wet clothes? Well, so we don't really get wet. I have a set of foul weather gear in there that I haven't worn in like six years. Wow. So, you know, that was the reason for the hard top was to keep everybody you know, dry and comfortable. So this is the, the same washing machine that's been in most boots for a really long time. Uh -huh. and, uh, it's not anything new, but this is a washer and dryer. That sounds amazing. It's almost like funny to say it's life changing, but yeah. no, it's it seems like it would actually be life changing. No, no, and then I got to comment on one other thing. I got like huge chair envy. And all of this stuff's hooked together, right? So I could like over there. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is the command station for sure. So this is the pilot berth. So this is where I lived for years. The leak wall is real midships. It's right by the engine room, so it's super loud. But I always slept like a baby in here. This is kind of the center of the seesaw. Mm -hmm. So as the boat's moving, you get a lot less motion right here. And then this back is kind of where the crew stays. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of where we sleep and hang out. And we have all of our stuff here in our beds, and our little entertainment TV. And Oh, nice. See so your this water maker yeah, membranes. Water, yeah, water maker here. A Yamar 170, it's a DTH engine. 12 kW generator. Yeah. And, and what's that for to the engine? Air pressure. What do you use that for other than like spray painting? Pump it up the dinghy, man. How do you pump up your dinghy? My mouth. <laughs> Every time. One thing that Libra has that a lot of other boats don't is yeah, kind of like a full shop, right? Yeah. We got a welder, extra spreaders just in case, all of our vices and drill presses. I do a lot of woodwork, so I do. I have a miter saw and extra parts, tools, and then I have my little wood pile. And then that's really kind of the inside of the boat. All right, man. Well, thanks for the tours. I love your boat. I think yeah. it's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming on, man. Well, thanks, man. All right, Appreciate man. it. Have a good one, buddy. <laughs> 
Man, it's a cold morning for a swim there. I need it. Yeah. Our uh, tropical storm survival party went on until 12 or 11.30. Which is late for us. Which is late for us. <laughs> Chilly, but refreshing. You guys coming in? Heck no. <laughs> He's like, Jordan, get back to the boat. Jordan, you're getting too far away. Please come closer. What's he doing? What's he doing? <laughs> I'll tell you, man, nothing like going through a tropical storm to make you really, really appreciate a nice, beautiful day like today. So we are going to head off on an electric vehicle car thing. It's called the Twizzy, and it's an electric car. It's kind of like a scooter. We're going to be doing a little bit of Maverick and Goose today. Is this your idea of fun, man? What you're looking at here is the finest electric Twizzy on the market. It's the Twizzy 9000. This puppy can push 35 miles an hour. It could go fast, it's just that the speed limit is 35. That's right, and we obey the laws. Because that's cool. Because that's cool, because we're badass. Because we're rebels. What, that's how I open doors? What, you open doors this way? No, no way, not me. <laughs> and there you go, that's current. So next time you guys are in Bermuda, check out current vehicles. All right. Buddy, you gotta remind me, we gotta stay on the left side of the road. Okay, here we go. You ready, Goose? Ready. Let's do this. What's Osu's? He's Iceman. Osu is Iceman, okay, that's a good idea. You can be my wingman anytime. Left side, left side, buddy. Left side, strong side, right? Right, Iceman? Okay, so up ahead is the unfinished church. Hold on to your butts. Powering down the engine. No. God, what a cool church. So I guess this was built originally in 1874, but it's never been finished. There was like a split in congregation at one point. There was a hurricane at another point. They lost funds at some point. And so this really cool Gothic style cathedral built for 650 people was just never finished. Okay, goodbye, unfinished church. I'm sorry you didn't get finished, but you're very pretty. Wow, man, the watercolor here is beautiful. All right, off-roading, buddy, you ready? Yeah, come on, Ghost Rider. Iceman, hold on, it's gonna get bumpy. Oh yeah, that's how you do it, buddy. Nice. Nothing but grace. Good work, Goose. Man, it's crazy because like we did a lot of research on Bermuda and this beach did not pop up like in any of our research. Like I don't even know the name of this place. <laughs> back here. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, I feel really protected. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool driving around these roads because they're kind of like windy and you go up and down hills and then you get to like be surprised by the view that's right over the crest of the hill that you're on. And there's all these like really cute little bays all along the road. It's just like eye candy everywhere. Although it's a British colony, there's a lot of history that connects Bermuda to the United States. When the colonies started the Revolutionary War and parted from England, they created an embargo against all British goods. But the problem was that Bermuda got most of their food from the United States. Some individuals in Bermuda actually approached the new government in the United States to uh, see if they would make an exception on the embargo so that they would trade food to Bermuda so that Bermudans didn't starve. So the new government agreed and secretly under the cover of darkness, some US ships came over to the island and a couple of Bermudans broke into the armory where the British government had all of their gunpowder and they stole like a bunch of barrels of gunpowder and traded it to the Americans for food. So you can definitely see why they put a fort at this location and like way off in the distance you can see there there's a sailboat exiting the main channel that goes into and out of St. George's Harbor. So when we came in at night the other night, we were right in that channel over there. And in fact, we had to round this point when we approached that channel. So this particular fort 
has a really good vantage point for any boats going in and out of St. George's. All right, so we are now arriving at Art Mills, which we hear has the best local fish sandwich on the whole island. So today the fish is Wahoo, the most popular requested from the raisin bread with tartar sauce and coleslaw. We also have cheese, lettuce, tomato, raw onion, and sauteed onion. We do all of that, all of that? Yeah. Well, those are huge. Thank you very much. All right, well, this whole bag is filled up with two sandwiches. So each sandwich was about $20, but I feel like we're gonna get our money's worth. And everything in Bermuda is pretty expensive, so I'm so excited, but this is two sandwiches. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> All right, I am so starving. We found this super awesome jungle forest area. It's technically a sandwich because it's like meat and vegetables between bread, but like you could never eat it like a normal sandwich. <laughs> it's really good. If I have to pay $20 for a sandwich, at least it's the size of like a small child. <laughs> <laughs> the cool shade of this banyan tree forest was just what we needed for a quick rest and to be able to walk off our giant sandwiches. And our next stop was to what is probably the prettiest beach in Bermuda. Warwick Long Bay is a long, broad beach where turquoise water meets a gentle sandy slope. But hidden behind a tall group of jagged rocks lies Jobson's Cove. It's basically a secret lagoon protected on all sides by towering cliffs. Way down there is like the biggest parrotfish I think I've ever seen in my life. That is nuts. And we can see it from all the way up here. And we were able to find an even more secluded small beach that we could only access by walking through the lagoon. We have our storage locker. Okay. A couple of hours. Oh man. I'm gonna take a nap, buddy. I'm sleepy. More than just sleeping on the sand in the shade of a cliff, playing with Oso in crystal clear water and watching giant tropical fish, there is something particularly special about having such a beautiful spot all to ourselves. But eventually we had to brush the sand off our feet and twizzy our way on to Hamilton, the largest town on the island. Now I just about always prefer small towns and nature over the hustle and bustle of a place like Hamilton, but I loved how everywhere I looked I could see evidence of Hamilton's deep connection to the world of sailing. Hamilton now serves as the finish line for legendary sailboat races, like the Newport to Bermuda race, the Annapolis to Bermuda race, and lots of other ones, making sailing a large part of the culture of this town. Also, once a week in the summer, the town hosts a street party called Harbor Night, where the main drag is closed off to cars and people can walk among stalls of local artisans, vendors, and musicians. All right, well, today is a day of errands as we're preparing to leave Bermuda and sail to Portugal. So right now we gotta take Oso in to get his international health certificate so that he can get clearance into Portugal. How you doing, buddy? Are you gonna pass a health certificate? I'm having a bad like pregnancy day today. I feel like I have a good day and I get a lot of stuff done and I'm really energetic. And then the next day my body's like, you're not doing anything today. You're gonna sleep. Having a really tired day. Yeah, All right, Oso, look healthy so we can go to Portugal. Yeah, liven up, liven up, liven up. It's funny because Oso loves going to the vet. I think it's because he gets so much attention from lots of different people. So after a quick physical exam, Oso was given a clean bill of health and we were off to the grocery store to provision for the crossing. Boy, are the groceries pretty expensive out here on this beautiful but very isolated island. <laughs> but I think we're definitely gonna eat really well on this passage. So now it's time for me to just do the provisioning Tetris game. I got a butt ton of eggs and I've learned the hard way to always tape them closed when I put them in deep storage. Ooh, day before a passage, everything's a little bit always up in the air. So also did a load of laundry and then we've got all of our snacks just out. Gotta find a home for those. Jordan's working away on the episode that you're probably watching right now. Whew. It's gonna be a busy day, but I'm really excited to get back out there on the big blue. 
All right, welcome aboard. All right, so it's been a chaotic morning. We've got our weather window set for sometime today, and we're also welcoming our very special new crew member, Jen. Her boyfriend, Chad, is here. Uh, they are both patrons, and we met them in Annapolis, and we've had such a blast getting to know them, and we're so lucky that Jen is gonna be joining us. Jen, how are you feeling right now? Pumped. You're feeling pumped? I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. This is a dream come true, and I cannot wait. We're gonna have a fantastic time with this past. That's great. Ryan Rayfield was saying that you are a very positive <laughs> like uh, entity to have on a crew, and I can see that that is definitely <laughs> true. So, but how would you describe the the vibe right now. For a minute there, we had a crazy hormonal pregnant lady running around <laughs> yelling at people. Just so you know, I have zero energy, and I'd like you to just help me out today. So please just film. Which was tense. The pregnant lady feels really bad, sorry. But now I've gotten everything done on my to-do list, and I also ate two sandwiches. You ready for an adventure, little baby? All right, we all set, bud? I think we're all set. We got the water tanks full, the diesel tanks full. Also got a bath. All right, last step before we leave Bermuda is checking out of the country. So we're heading over to the customs dock to add Jen to our crew list and to bid Bermuda farewell. All right, so Desiree and Jen are in the customs office getting us cleared out and uh, yeah, I'm experiencing a lot of emotions, man. I mean, A, saying goodbye to St. George's is sad. You know, we were just talking about how good of a feeling it came when we rolled up on this customs dock, you know, like a week and a half ago. And Osa was like so thrilled to see land and we were just so pumped to get to walk around. This whole lead up to the crossing reminds me a lot of, you know when you ride a roller coaster and there's that part at the beginning where it's just like ka-chink, 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 ka-chink. And I feel like we're at that like last couple of ka-chinks where it's starting to like round like this and you just know that like there's only one way out from there and that's like to go down the roller coaster. It's definitely a, a very like interesting feeling and one that I'm not sure that I've really experienced a lot in the past. But I mean, I, I'm feeling very ready. I feel good about our weather window. I feel good about the state of the boat. I feel good about the state of the crew, except for the crazy pregnant lady. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> she has her good moments, but yeah, it feels like a monumental moment. As much of it as feels like, you know, kind of stressful, it's also like deeply exciting as well. And so I'm going to try to focus on the exciting part. Okay, go ahead, Jen. You can toss that on. Okay, so you're good, go ahead. Main looks pretty good, but the gentleman might need to come out here in a sec. Roger that. Let's take up on it right now. Go ahead and grind into that. <laughs> Bye guys! <laughs> good luck! Thank you. Thank you. 